Good morning guys and welcome back to another video with me. My name is Amy and I have been on a weight loss journey for the past two and a, two years and a few months and I have lost 55 pounds and a little bit more in the process and I'm on the final 10 pounds and I really want to show you what I eat every single day, day in and day out um, in order to continue to lose weight and to make this lifestyle sustainable for me. So that being said, I'm starting my morning with a cup of tea. I am British and that is what we do. We drink tea. So, really Rose? I have a one-year-old, nearly one-year-old, called Romy, um, whose full name is actually Andromeda. Um, but we just call her Romy. So, in case you didn't know. Um, oh. <laughs> and Romy is coming at us with my breakfast. Well, part of my breakfast. Uh, my husband found some reduced parsley. I love parsley, and so I'm gonna get involved. Oh my goodness me. I have a very interesting breakfast concoction coming at you today. Basically, I cooked up loads of millet. Um, I'm really enjoying millet at the moment. Um, and, and now I'm trying to get creative with millet because I have loads of millet. So if I ever am feeling in a bit of a food rut and I want to mix it up a little bit, I cook a massive batch of something, then I've got it and then I have to do something with it. So um, yeah, so anyway, I have done blended oats, blended oatmeal in the past and I absolutely love it. Um, and yesterday I did um, a chocolate pudding made with um, millet and so today my thoughts is blended millet porridge that's kind of the thing I'm thinking of uh, blended millet with some banana and some other cool flavors I might go peanut butter jam style because I've got loads of frozen fruit that I can use um, so yeah I'll let you know how that goes so I've got my cannellini beans that I have frozen from my food prep earlier on this week um, and I'm gonna whack those in with my millet and I'll show you what kind of creation I come up with. <laughs> but I am actually starting my day um, with some parsley, which sounds really strange. I love parsley. My husband bought some discounted parsley the other day and I've got two very ripe tomatoes that we need using. So I'm gonna make myself a little parsley, tomato, lemon salad um, as my starter. Not because I wanna get my 50-50 plate in, but I mean, that's a great reason as well, but mainly because I love parsley and I really fancy some tomatoes with my parsley. Um, and then I'm gonna have my porridge afterwards. So it is 10.30 for reference. I'm actually not super hungry. Don't know why I'm thinking about food. I might just make it now and then eat it when I get hungry so I don't have to make it later. Yeah, good plan, good plan. Yeah, so also today, I'm hoping to answer a few of your questions. I asked um, over on Instagram if you guys had any questions for me um, and quite a good few came in. So I'll try and answer them with some of those questions today. So stay tuned for that, baby. So, we are not making breakfast yet. Romy wants to play in the front room. So, Romy, you all right, Rams? She's just in the pens. Um, anyway, so I thought I would just address a few quick questions real quick while I'm sipping my tea and while Romy is playing. So, one of the questions I get a lot <clears throat> is, um, how come I eat so late in the day? So, really, that is just such a personal preference. I, personally, just don't tend to get hungry often well it's, it's like quarter to 11 now so it can be anywhere from 11 anywhere from 10 till midday and it really just depends on the day and it depends how I'm feeling um and it depends what I'm, what I've got going on how much activity I've done loads of different things so I don't purposefully eat later on in the day um I don't tend to have my meal number one later on in the day on purpose um but I am really just trying to listen to my body's hunger fullness cues and I eat when I'm hungry and I'm just not hungry in the morning. I have cups of tea. Um, occasionally I might have an apple if I feel like I want something nibbly. Um, but I don't eat until I'm actually hungry. Anyway, so you don't have to do that. If you get hungry at seven o'clock in the morning when you wake up, by all means, eat breakfast or meal number one at seven o'clock in the morning. And you know, if also that goes without saying, I have three meals a day, right? That's just what, well, well most of the time anyway, I have three meals a day. Oh. And that is what is nice for me because that's when my body asks for food. But if you need two meals a day or equally if you need six meals a day, then that is totally fine. Listen to what your body is saying. When you eat this food, this is the food that is meant for our bodies. We're able to fully understand our hunger fullness cues when we eat whole, food, whole plant foods. So when you're eating this way, listen to your body. If your body is saying it needs five meals a day, then feel free to have five meals a day. Two or three portions. Don't worry about it. You know, when... When you eat this way, don't think of it as, I need to try and eat as little as possible to lose weight by next week or by next month. You are in this for the long haul. You're, this is a lifestyle. You want to know that in two years time, you are going to be your leanest self. So it doesn't matter how much you eat today, as long as you are eating those right foods, those calorie dilute foods, 
and then it doesn't matter how many you're eating all that matters is that you are eating those foods and focusing on those foods so try not to focus too much on quantity and try just to focus on the quality of your food um, and that way you'll be able to stay in tune with your body so anyway that's what I do I listen to my body's hunger fullness cues and that is so important in this way of eating I know it's hard for people to do at the very beginning um, so just you know try and Try and take it easy. Don't worry too much about it. Don't worry if you overindulge and overeat a little bit. That's, yeah, that's totally fine. Everyone kind of does that. But just try and have it at the back of your mind that it's always something to strive for. Um, anyway, so the other thing I do get asked quite a bit is about my husband. So is my husband vegan? Does he eat the same way that I do? Um, you guys know my kids eat the same way as me. Um, with you know exception to an occasional indulgent treat that we might have when we go to a vegan festival or something don't eat it you sausage but so my husband is vegan and he doesn't try to eat the starch solution um it's not something that he feels the need to do which is totally fair enough but he has become much more healthy in recent months years so as the time has gone on so he wasn't always vegan when we met he was a meat eater then he slowly transitioned into being veggie after a couple of years and then he was veggie for quite a good few years um and then he went vegan but him and i we were both massive junk food vegans so we would obviously eat all the burgers all the pizza go out all the time loads of takeaway all that kind of good stuff well all that kind of stuff that you know you guys know um anyway so obviously since i've jumped into this way of eating i do a lot of the cooking in the house anyway so when i make cauliflower alfredo pasta he obviously has that because i'm making the meals so whenever i'm making stuff um he's obviously going to be involved he if he's out and about he will eat a vegan croissant or you know a sandwich or whatever else there it happens to be um so he's not super strict on it but i would say the majority of what he eats because he obviously eats a lot of the stuff that i make is pretty healthy and he's also really enjoying kale salads at the moment so he's making himself a kale salad every single day at the moment he's a little bit addicted to it um which is fantastic but i do think being around all this healthy food and having obviously all this healthy food in our house that in itself the environment that i have set up for him thank you baby the environment that i have put in place um for him and for us inevitably means that he's going to eat more healthfully um so you know if you're worried about your partner and your kids and all that kind of stuff don't stress too much at the beginning just try and make those foods available also make them delicious i always try and make really yummy food that i think he's gonna like and my kids are gonna like um so that they're really excited about this way of eating so i'll, I'll always make like cookies and brownies not necessarily for me I'm, I'm not too fussed about that stuff most of the time to be honest um but just for my family so that they have something that they can really indulge in but that's also super healthy um so anyways that's about my husband and oh you open the pen um and yeah a little bit of backstory but i did want to say if you guys have any questions for me um, i know i don't get back to you an awful lot of the time down below um, but I will really try and focus on the comments in this specific video. So drop me a comment, let me know any specific questions, and I will try and cover that in the next video where possible. So a couple more questions came in. I just thought I'd answer them while I'm here. Um, so one of the questions was, <clears throat> how do I avoid the temptation of eating out and eating junk food uh, when it's obviously so readily available, uh, vegan junk food at the moment, which is fantastic for those people who are non-vegan junkies they can transition really easily over to this lifestyle. But I do feel like there needs to be a different movement in terms of a healthy vegan movement to wash over the world um, um, at some point because the junk food vegan movement is just on the rise. And although that is fantastic for the animals and obviously it's brilliant in so many ways, it's also not fantastic for people's health. Um, so I really hope at some point there's a health, whole food plant-based movement um, you know in in the cities um in supermarkets and that kind of stuff maybe i'm asking for too much at the moment probably am one day maybe but how do i avoid, avoid that temptation well it's a tricky one for me well it's not tricky it's a different one for me than it will, probably will be for you but for me i started this journey in covid and that's why i chose to start it because there was no temptations around me i basically didn't go anywhere for the first year of me jumping into this lifestyle and that was what i needed to do at the time so obviously it's different for everyone and i know there's no lockdown now you're allowed to go everywhere and there's food everywhere so if you feel like you are too addicted to this junk food stuff feel feel free to just not go out to dinner or just don't have anything for you know for a good you know few months until you're feeling like this way of eating is really kicked in um, and it's on autopilot but there are loads of other things you can do one of which the main thing i would say to avoid eating out and to avoid those temptations 
is to make sure you're eating enough food, right? If you are, if even me, if I am hungry and I go out and there's ice cream and I'm hungry, right? I'm not going to be able to say no to that ice cream. So what do I do? I make sure that I've either eaten loads of food before I go out or I bring food with me when I go out. That way, you know, if I, I'm looking at that ice cream and I'm hungry, but I also have a potato or a few or some hummus and carrots in my bag, I'll say to myself, right, I'm going to eat my potatoes first. If after my potatoes and then, and then I'm satisfied, if I still want the ice cream, I will have it. But more often than not, once I've eaten those potatoes, I'm actually satisfied and then my logical brain can kick in, not my hungry animal brain, and I realise I don't want the ice cream. So that is how I get over it. Um, but the more you eat this way, the more you eat this food, the more you fall in love with it. And that is the stuff you really begin to crave. You know, what you eat today, you crave tomorrow. And that is so true. I've woken up craving parsley. I'm going to have a parsley salad for breakfast. That is mental. Two years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. Um, so anyway, it does take time to adjust. Your taste buds will adjust. If you feel the, if you feel the need to cut off from all junk food completely for a short period of time, then by all means do that to get yourself in a good place. Um, but yeah, make sure you're eating enough food. If you're not eating enough food, and by food I mainly mean starches here, make sure you're eating enough starches. Then you can be prepared for anything. It's when you're starving that you eat the junk food. Anyway, I'm gonna go. So it is 11 o'clock, just gone past 11. And it's so funny, hunger just hits me out of nowhere. I was not hungry in the slightest and all of a sudden, I was like, boom, need some food. So it's really interesting how that happens. I don't know whether that's, it's like that for you guys. Um, anyway, I am gonna make some food. So I'll show you what I've got. I've got some, i tell you what, I'll make it first and then we'll chat about it because I'm actually not sure what's gonna go in it yet. So I want to explain what I've actually created. I don't even know what this is turning out to be. It's kind of turning out to be like a cake pudding. I'm super excited. So let me show you. Yes. This is the general vibe that we have going on at the moment. Um, it's kind of like a cake thing. Um, it's super yummy. Oh, ah, it's very hot. Ooh, I'm just microwaving it to kind of get a little bit more of that crust on the top. Um, so let me tell you what went in here. I have done a cup of millet. I've done half a cup of cannellini beans. I did a banana. I did some PB2, which is peanut butter powder. I did some vanilla essence and some soy milk, uh, like a cup of soy milk. Um, that was about it. And then I blended it all up nice and smooth. That mixture was in itself very delicious, like a pudding. Um, then I stuck it in the microwave. It's gonna turn into cake and I'm gonna defrost some berries um, and whack that on the top with another drizzle of PB2 and it's like a peanut butter jam cake. I am super excited. It's amazing what you can do when you get a little bit creative and you're not afraid to try some new experiments. Sometimes they don't work out, fair enough. Sometimes, more often than not, they are delicious. The breakfast is ready and I am super excited about this one, guys. This is one of my favorites in a long time. And I love my food, I eat all my food. Please excuse the babbling baby. So for starters, I have got this lovely parsley and tomato salad. I've got about a tablespoon of tahini on the top with lemon juice and salt. Keeping it simple, but that is going to be very delicious, and I'm really excited about that bit. And wait until you see this one. This is my millet bean cake, which sounds strange, with blueberry compote, uh, which is just defrosted blueberries in the microwave, and PB2 sprinkled on the top. Look how beautiful. I mean, oh my God. Can you believe you get to eat this kind of stuff and lose weight, like effortlessly? And this is, a, this is you know, this is a lot of food. This is what I'm having for breakfast. This is extremely calorie dilute, incredible food. And obviously I've got more berries that I didn't put on here. In fact, I'll show you what berries I've got. Um, oh, hold on, I need to take a video first. Anyway, I've got extra berries. <laughs> Instagram, eh? Anyway, I've got extra berries to pour on top. Um, but man, this is gonna be delicious. I haven't actually properly tasted it, so I'll tell you what it's like in a sec. So, firstly, this salad. It's absolutely delicious. I love parsley and tomatoes and the tahini really makes it work. I don't use healthy fats all the time, but I love tahini in this salad. It's really yum. Um, obviously I used it sparingly. Um, and I just wanted to say, this is a fantastic opportunity. You know, if you're eating stuff like this, little baby girl, are you eating babies? Um, if you're eating stuff like this, give some to your babies. Romy is loving the parsley tomato combination. Look, she's dying for some more. And what I do is, I, and I, I know this is disgusting, and if you're not a parent who does this, or, you know, if you're not crazy like me, then it seems weird, but... Mm -hmm. Here you go, Ramsey. I just munch it up. 
and give it to her like a baby bird. What a fantastic thing to introduce kids to at such a young age, parsley. I mean, but you can do this with every single meal. So if you are eating a meal, just let your kids eat the same thing. It, it helps you become healthier and then become healthier at the same time. Look, she's dying for this parsley. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so genuinely Romy ate half of my salad. Oh, she loved that salad and that, that makes me so happy. Anyway, she, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyway, she is excited to dig into this just as much as I am. And I'll tell you, this is a, I can't even describe this. So you guys just have to make it. You want some? Yes, yes, yes. My food is never my own. Mmm, what do you think of that, Ramsey? So this is kind of like pudding plus a cake and also kind of like cheesecake as well. Now, you know, my recipe, I'm going to be posting it over on Instagram. So feel free to go and check that out. It will have been from a few days ago now because um, I post on Instagram immediately and a YouTube is a few days late. Um, so um, it's kind of, yeah, anyway, it's incredible. But I have, my level of sweetness is super low. I do not need things to be super, super sweet. If you are not quite at that stage yet, feel free to add maple syrup or brown sugar or whatever. Oh, Romy, those are spiky, baby girl. Um, feel free to add maple syrup, brown sugar, anything you need to make this nice and sweet for yourself. Um... I've just kept mine without any sweetener. The banana is my sweetener and the blueberries. So I love it this way because my palate has adjusted. Yes, you want some more? All right. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I tell you, it's so good. Let me hear. Let me hear, babes. Hopefully I get to eat most of this. You never know. Mm. Anyway, mm. I want to kind of show you the consistency. Let's have a look at this. So that is like kind of fluffy cheesecakey. Mm. Oh, sorry. That's really good. But anyway, Romy loves it, as you can see. So we're gonna go and enjoy this. Um, also, if you're new here, obviously by now you know there's a lot of squeaking in my videos because of Romy and she's very vocal, and I apologise for that. That's the only thing I know how to do. Otherwise, you don't get videos. So anyway. is it is 10 past four and i have not had any extra food yet because i have not been hungry and i've been busy um, but i am having a matcha tea let's pop in a little bit of this good matcha stuff in here or oh, maybe a little more um just because i quite fancy something that's not caffeine so um yeah i realized <clears throat> it's friday and i have not actually done myself a meal plan for the week because my meal plan ended on Friday. Uh, I've been too preoccupied with other stuff today to think about the fact that I need to do a meal plan. Um, so I have not done one and therefore, lo and behold, I haven't got a clue what we're eating tonight for dinner. We've got loads of food in, but because I haven't got a plan, I'm knackered, the kids are crazy and my mind's a bit boggled and I don't know what to make. So this is the power of having a meal plan. Honestly, it really has saved my cheeks more than you can imagine. Ah, oh, this matcha tea is going to do, do me good. Anyway, um, check on the kids, make sure they are alive. They are alive. And they're reading. Very cute. Um, so, <clears throat> right, so let's figure out what we're going to make because I haven't got a clue. My husband, Je right, so this ended, that was last week, mash gravy. So we ended pumpkin soup. We haven't had pizza night, but we have had leftover night with sweet potatoes yesterday. So what have I got in this fridge? So there's still some pumpkin soup that needs using. I think my husband said he's gonna have that. I've got broccoli, I've got millet. I could do a millet broccoli stir fry, but no. What I'm thinking instead is a hearty stew soup thing, actually, because I'm feeling, my throat's still just feeling a little bit mm, niggly. And uh, I fancy something warming and hearty. So we're going to go for kind of a stew. So I'm going to do red lentils, potatoes, courgettes, carrots. Have I got cabbage? No cabbage, no cabbage. Maybe some of that lovely kale if my husband will let me have some. Um, yeah, anyway, we're going to go big soup. Um, that's what I've decided to do. And I then also need to do a meal plan uh, for the rest of the week because we have a busy weekend. We're doing a Mexican feast at my aunt's on Sunday and we're going out to dig a land tomorrow and I have no idea what we're bringing for food. In the midst of the madness, I've managed to make some food. I'm sorry about Romy. She doesn't want to be held. 
She doesn't want to be down. I think she's knackered and she's hungry. I'll feed you in a second, baby girl. Come here. Come here. Oh, muffins. Come here. Oh, sweet. Come here. Sweet. Okay, so this is what I've got. I've got a massive, big... Oh, gosh, baby girl, don't touch that. How hot. I've got a massive amount of stew in here. I've got four, three or four carrots, two courgettes, five potatoes, half of a big... I did find a cabbage. I was so excited. I knew there was a cabbage. I did half of that cabbage. Um, and I did mm, like three cups of red lentils, loads of stock, garlic powder. I'm trying to figure out what other seasonings I want to put in there. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to do it later. Okay. I am outside because my kids are too noisy. I've tried filming inside and it's, there's just no point. Anyway, I've got my stew. It is delicious and I'm really hungry now. Um, yeah, I kind of skipped lunch today. I'll probably end up having a couple of bowlfuls of this goodness. I want to show you this. So like I said before, loads of potatoes and obviously the lentils for my starch. And then I've got loads of non-starchy veg in there. And also the fact that it's soup and therefore is basically basically water. Um, so that dilutes the calorie density of it greatly. Um, but I, I'm feeling that I'm probably going to have a couple of bowls. I'll let you know. Um, so that's going to kind of be lunch and dinner rolled into one. Anyway, I'm going to go and enjoy this because I'm very hungry and it's very cold outside. I don't know why I'm not wearing anything. <clears throat> Hey guys, so it's quite late now, it's about 10 o'clock um, and I've just finished a lovely coaching call um, and I did just want to say, after I had dinner, I had two bowls and I was really stuffed afterwards, but for some reason, I was really craving something sweet or my mind was just going to like a snacky place and I'm not really sure why, I think it was maybe because we were having family movie night and I just associated, still associated that with snacky stuff even though we haven't had snacks family movie night in ages although last week we did have hot chocolate um anyway but i asked myself was i truly hungry and the answer was no because i was not craving any broccoli or an apple or a carrot or anything like that so i could have had something sweet um but i chose not to instead i chose to honor my hunger fullness cues so it still happens to me where i feel snacky and i have to kind of chat to myself about that and just say actually you're not hungry so you don't need anything what else are you looking for and instead i just had a cuddle with my babies and that worked just nicely um so anyway i i'm not hungry in the slightest um so yeah anyway so i would mention that um, it happens to everyone you just have to check in with yourself every now and again. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm going to go downstairs and take over from my husband. Um, and I will see you in the next one tomorrow.